Katie Freebs. It's Jordan Page from FunCheaperFree.com. And guys, we are hunkering down because of this coronavirus. Us, like many of you, are basically on either mandatory quarantine or self-quarantine with this coronavirus, this COVID-19 outbreak. And you know what? I was gonna post some cute videos of my cute babies because I don't know if you guys know this, but I'm not pregnant anymore. Had my babies on March 8th. And I have so much I wanna share with you guys about that, but I just feel like as soon as I brought the babies into the world, the world kind of fell apart a little bit and there's a lot going on and there's a lot weighing heavily on all of us. So the baby stuff will come as I wait to get my birth video back. It'll buy us a little bit of time. In the meantime, I really would like to share with you guys as much as I can about how we are surviving with you know school being out and work being canceled and restaurants and everything basically being shut down and canceled the entire world and how we are handling it at home with eight kids, 10 and under, two of them being newborn twins, three of them being 17 months and under. There's a lot going on right now. This is not gonna be a very fancy video. I'm just gonna walk you through real deal survival, how the pages are handling being quarantined here at our house, how we are hunkering down, how we are doing school at home, how we're managing having eight kids, 10 and under, handling the newborns and keeping everybody safe and occupied in real time, in real ways. So I guess let's just kick it. We'll just show you how we do this. Your outfit does not have to be fancy or anything, but even just getting out of those pajamas or sweatpants and putting on some comfy stretchy jeans and a normal top makes you feel a little more human and a little less pent up. Make your bed. It's amazing how when you make your bed, especially first thing in the morning, you instantly kick off your day on a productive track. It makes your whole room feel cleaner and you instantly feel like you've accomplished something. Another tip is be sure to have your kids make their bed too. As good as it feels for you, it feels good for them and also it gives them a task and something they can accomplish. Makes your whole house feel cleaner at the same time and that is a bonus. Right now with all of the coronavirus stuff going on, there's a lot of anxiety to be felt in the world, right? And we're just inundated with messages and news updates and social media posts and it can really build on your sense of dread or anxiety or stress. So one of the things that I have done that's really helped is I make it a point that before I read any news or any social media, I have to read something uplifting. And for me, that's scriptures, something uplifting, inspiring. I just tell myself I'm not gonna pick up my phone and engage digitally until I read something that grounds me and fulfills me and gives me hope and peace and faith. It really makes a difference. Also, prayer and meditation is a really important way to start your day and give yourself a minute of peace goes a long way. One of my biggest tips for being quarantined is to make yourself a block schedule. On my Instagram page, I share my actual block schedule with how we are legitimately running our day, the things that we're doing within our blocks and how it works. So be sure to check the link in my profile and follow me on Instagram and you'll be able to refer back to a really clean shot of my schedule there. But I will show you here as well. All right, so here's a quick look at my block schedule. So the reason why a block schedule is so valuable is because instead of trying to calculate your day hour by hour, which let's be honest, it's just not realistic. A block schedule is better because it gives you a chunk of time and something to focus on during that chunk of time, which gives you some flexibility if something pops up, such as newborns waking up and needing to nurse, and that takes 30 or 45 minutes out of my block. It doesn't derail my whole day. I have a video that teaches you exactly how to make a block schedule and how it works and even a free printable for you to make it yourself. So check that out below. But for those of you who get the gist, let me walk you through mine. Okay, so our first block of the day is basically when we all wake up, 
These are all the things we need to get done. Even though we're not leaving the house, it's important that we make our bed and get dressed like we talked about. Also to do our hair and brush our teeth and keep some semblance of normalcy and hygiene. And then also we gotta eat a good breakfast, clean it up. Um, we do scriptures as a family. I rotate one or two loads of laundry. And then we do a couple chores as a family to get the house clean and started off on the right foot. Our next block, we do our school block basically first thing until about lunchtime because their brains are sharp and they have a little more energy and longevity first thing in the morning we found. So these are some things they can do on screens. Otherwise they have workbooks and a lot of homework. We do lunch around 12 and sometimes we'll keep the workbooks out and keep working through lunch a little bit if we need to. But basically by 12.30 we're done with lunch and school because the kids' brains are a little fried. And so we send everybody outside for at least 30 minutes of exercise. They set up a Ninja Warrior course the other day or we make them do stuff on the trampoline or whatever. But then this is kind of a block where if I need a nap or if we need to work, Bubba and I, because he and I are still working from home right now. We've got employees that are trying to keep their families fed. We're trying to stay in business. And so for us, we really need to set aside that working time, even though we're quarantined at home as well. And so it's important for us to give the kids that free time in the afternoon for them to go play outside or go do something so we can get some things done. Or for me, I still have two newborns. So if I need a day where I can hardly function and need a nap, I at least have a a little break in there while McEwen and the twins are napping. My next block is a dinner block and one thing that I was thinking would be fun is as I'm cooking to basically kind of turn it into a cooking class. Probably not for all my kids because that's a lot in the kitchen at one time but maybe one or two kids at a time. Honestly I figure there's a lot of stuff I'm doing anyway. I'm cooking, I'm doing laundry, stuff around the house. This is a perfect opportunity to take those day-to-day -day things and to use them as teaching opportunities for my kids. So I can teach my little kids how to sort laundry, my big kids how to wash the laundry, my bigger kids how to cook. Anyway, it's a good way to take what you have to do and to multitask with it. We try to do dinner around 5.30 and then clean up as a family and then we do a, kind of a blitz clean around the house. A lot of times they are pretty rambunctious after dinner so we'll let them go out and play. And then bedtime we have them do their reading just so that their brains are not totally fried here. We have them read in their bed while they're getting ready for bed for about 20 or 30 minutes. We do our church lesson for the week because church is now at home as well. And this is a free curriculum that I will link to below that's through my church if you guys are interested. And then showers. And then we put the kids to bed and Bubba and I just kind of clean up, we catch up on the day, and then we relax and prep for tomorrow. So it's really, really helpful to have this block system and that way it's nice because Bubba's parents are in town right now helping us with the twins so it's kind of nice that we can say oh it's 10 o'clock time for the school block and then if I have to go upstairs and feed the babies whoever is down here with the kids knows what's going on next it also gives the kids something to look forward to like hey we just got to make it till 12 30 and then you guys get free time and then in terms of earning screens one of my tips is to be really careful about screens go light on them we have let our kids use screens but when we do it we try to make it educational like maybe they're playing a learning game or they're drawing there's a really cool channel on YouTube that teaches them how to draw or maybe it's something educational like watching National Geographic or about animals or maybe it's a video game that gets them up and moving like Just Dance on the Xbox so with the screens just be careful I know it feels right in the moment because it gets them out of your hair but the more screen time kids get the harder it's gonna be as the weeks wear on try to be selective and really block it into your time a tip is to use Use the clipboard system. We've talked about this before too. I have a video that explains it, but every kid gets a clipboard and at the beginning of the day, they have responsibilities like making their beds, cleaning their rooms, putting their laundry away, and they cannot have screens at all unless their clipboard's done. And it really takes pressure off your shoulders as a parent. So when they're like, can I watch a show? Can I play Xbox? Can I be on the iPad? Can I, can I, can I, can I? Then you can look at their clipboard and say, oh, clipboard's not done. Nope. So that, that helps a ton.
Okay, this is called Art for Kids Hub. It's on YouTube. It's free. Oh, he bonked his head. You wanna hold it? It's cool because they teach you how to draw step by step, and they have from easy, easy drawings to advanced drawings. You want it? This is cute, because even Maury, his three, is doing it. Beck, looking really good, you guys. It's pretty fun. All right, so we don't have piano lessons, we don't have teachers, but for those who can't leave the house to go to their lessons, there are apps. This one's called Simply Piano. And this one's called Musician. Yeah. So wait, what is so the window is about four years. Right. Good job, Mary. Good job, Davy. You're doing so awesome. Oh yeah. Not gonna lie, a lot of chaos going on over here today. We got abruptly awakened by a major earthquake this morning. So that was crazy. So we settled down the kids, had to talk about emergency preparedness, worked on our 72 hour kids, and now we're getting to some school time. They are doing online school, some workbooks, and uh, online games that our school requires of the kids. We're just doing our best to get in some structured school time. It's a little rainy outside, so we won't be able to play outside today, so we're gonna have to get creative inside with crafts and things. All right, there you go, you guys. That's basically a few days into our quarantine situation and how we're surviving. Hopefully this gives you some tips, but most importantly, will you guys share in the comments below what you guys are doing to keep yourselves occupied, to keep yourselves physically and mentally healthy and in a good positive place? Will you please share how you're keeping your kids occupied, how you're working from home, how you're managing your finances, whatever it is, give us all the survival tips below. Thanks for watching, you guys. Hang in there. I know that times are a little crazy right now, but there is light in everything. So rather than just sitting and dwelling in the darkness and in the uncertainties, look for the light. Look for the bright spots. Look for half glass full moments. I know for me, I'm considering this an inconvenience, but a gift to have all my kids home, to have our schedule completely canceled, and for us to just focus on getting stronger as a family. So hopefully you guys see that as a benefit as well. I'm going to let you go. We'll talk to you guys soon. Hang in there, guys. Thinking of you. Bye. Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? You're messy. Right here. <laughs>